people really did stay home during that first lockdown and and it wasn't until the snowbirds and the tourists came back that our numbers started creeping up and i think um you know the fatigue of having to keep doing this for so long uh sort of ran aground and i think nobody has understood on any level on um in even in the cdc or the world health organization nobody has really understood how coronavirus would spread through urban or rural areas so it's still a surprise like the current um boost we have in numbers here in cascade county you know we we just don't have enough data to say what what contributed to that um that said i was really impressed with the professionalism of the um and the dedication of state employees like especially school teachers and i've had a lot of opportunity to interact with the unemployment division um people and i was just so astonished at how resourceful and dedicated they are how much they have to know to do their jobs and how they just stepped forward the you know it's the regular montanans who have been responding selflessly who are getting us through this despite that near perfect storm of uncertainty unfolding scientific understanding and amplified mis or disinformation on the whole we're just doing the best we can Well, I'm a retired postmaster, so I have um a history in the postal service and I know how much how how what store they put on the sanctity of the mail. And I know that Montanans have been voting by mail for years without trouble, just no problem. And voting is such a fundamental responsibility for citizens. It shouldn't be taken lightly. and i don't think that mailing a ballot in is any less responsible or secure than going to the polls when i was postmaster up in nyhart i used to stop by the senior center to vote after work and it was a great experience they had cookies they had coffee they had gossip it was fun and then they eliminated that polling place and since then we all voted by mail in every election and it just was never a problem And when I was postmaster trainer, I was responsible for explaining to new employees what the postal postal service means by protecting the sanctity of the mail. And that means that tampering with the mail in any fashion is a felony. And election mail undergoes even more scrutiny than first class mail. You have to sign for it a million times every day, pass it from hand to hand. And I I really think that the nonprofit nonpartisan postal service is trustworthy. I don't worry at all about mailing my ballot. Well, the trouble with the sales tax is that it's regressive. Regular Montanans wind up paying more of their income in taxes when you have a state sales a state sales tax. Uh right now Montana's low and middle income families already pay the highest tax rate when you measure that by the share of income uh that those families pay in taxes and a state a sales tax could just make that worse. Uh we've seen that happen in places that have implemented implemented local option sales taxes that the tax burden on the middle and low income fa- families goes up. Um Maine Other states, Maine comes to mind, have created a method to refund some of those sales taxes to people to make them more fair so they're more evenly distributed, but that can be really complicated, right? And then that's that process is subject to review all the time and manipulation. So um that seems like a a complicated way. I think most people think of us of out of state tourists when they think of a state tax or a sales tax but as i said i in my work with the institute for tourism and recreation research we did we collected data on tourists and it's clear that from that data that almost half of all tourism spending in montana is done by in-staters 
when they're traveling to other cities in the state for business, for recreation, for sports, shopping, and what have you. In short, um, so I, we need revenue, right? I, I can think of some other ways to create that revenue, but if there's a, if, if a sales tax is the way that we can create some revenue, I could support it if it's carefully calibrated with credit credits to even out the tax burden. It just doesn't help to tax people into poverty. And the sales tax is not an easy to calibrate tax. So our, I think our tax policy should be simple and it should be competitive to compete with other states. It should be efficient. And I think the simplicity and efficiency are at stake in a sales tax that has credits. Well, as an elected official, I don't get to decide about recreational marijuana. That's up to the voters, right? And we in the legislature just get to implement whatever the people decide. Um, that said, I've heard a lot about it. And everything that I've heard is like dueling statistics. I hear from the one side, all these statistics saying that legalizing recreational marijuana use increases crime and addiction and this and that. And then on the other side, I hear, no, that's not true. Um, and, you know, I'm not an expert on it. Um, so the, the observation that I have is that those dueling statistics make it really impossible to say, well, I mean, it's really an, impossible to say how much of that has to do with the fact that it's legal in one state and not legal in another. I'm really interested to see what happens in Canada because they legalized it across the entire country. And so they're not gonna have that problem of crime or addiction um, spikes that we have when we it's legal in one place and not in the other. Um, so luckily I don't have to ch decide I just have to implement once the voters decide. Nobody likes the Affordable Care Act, even the people who wrote the bill. I mean, it got so changed that it's not really a thing anymore. It's been chopped up, especially since the, um, the, uh, the, the change, uh, the uh, penalty for not getting insured was eliminated. Since that was eliminated, that changed the whole the whole tenor of the policy, right? So it really just, now it's just a, a bunch of parts. And it did do uh, some wonderful things for Montana, um, like getting 90,000 Montanans covered through Medicaid expansion. And it allowed kids to stay on their parents' plans till age 26, which has been a real success banned annual and lifetime limits, banned insurance discrimination against women, limited out-of-pocket uh, costs, generally holding the insurance companies accountable. But it also did some rotten things, particularly for the middle class in Montana. If you don't qualify for a subsidy, the plans that are available in Montana are kind of crummy. They're not that great and they're not that cheap. So there's definitely a middle class in Montana who got a raw deal with the Affordable Care Act. And I'd love to change that. I'd love to keep you know, the, uh, holding the insurance companies accountable and um, getting more people covered because um, you know, when we, when we have more people covered, we don't have to pay for the uninsured through the back end, through higher hospital costs, higher mortality, higher morbidity, all of those things that we are paying for when we have a lot of uninsured. So it's great that we got fewer uninsured people through the ACA. I'd like to make it fairer to, especially to Montanans because the, the um, healthcare exchanges are not well designed for big rural states like ours because you know it's not efficient to to deliver for the healthcare um, the HMOs.
the biggest thing I hear about from voters in the district is about civility. Um, every time I ask a constituent what I can do for them, what do they need, what are the roadblocks between you and having a happy, healthy, bountiful life, they just talk about the hatred that they see in politics, in the media, just everywhere. You know, they're, everybody's angry. Um, and the whole year, 2020, has had such violence, confusion, fear, unforeseeable changes, and we all just want it to be over. And I think that's reflected that desire to just have it done with is what I hear on the doors. I know that reporters wanna hear that, well, the issue on voters' minds is X, but I don't feel like I can really say that it's, it's the economy or it's healthcare or it's public safety because in coronavirus, those are all rolled into one. Um, what I hear is that they want us to be focusing on solutions that matter to them they don't want to hear about how people with opposing views are evil. And so that's why my motto is love thy neighbor, no exceptions. Thank you for being voters. Uh, I see that 1700 of my constituents have had their ballots accepted as of today. And I'm glad to see that. Um, and please keep in touch. I want to hear what's on your mind. That tells me what kind of uh, work to be doing in the session, because it's all about doing things for my constituents.